Uh, well, guys, uh, congratulations on the film. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time and watching it. That's 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 okay. That's what I that's what we love to do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Josh, I'll start with you. Uh, I just wondered, kind of, what was the kind of genesis of, of this one for you, and and why this particular story, and why you wanted to to bring it to the screen. Yeah, I had sort of been looking at wanting to do a heist movie of some kind, and you know, naturally, eventually, you get to bank robberies and you get to you know Bonnie and Clyde, and you know, kind of gravitating towards uh, more female driven films and female lead characters, I was like, oh, like a sort of, what if Bonnie was the one who was really in charge? And what would that look like in the modern age? Because with Bonnie and Clyde, you know, the, the myth of Bonnie and Clyde was built by the media trying to sell newspapers, you know? And um, you sort of go, well, what's that in the modern age? And it's social media. And I just thought this kind of collision of social media fame, the pursuit of likes, the pursuit of follows, with good old American violence was something that felt ripe for um, exploring, you know? And uh, so the attempt to sort of find something that would, you know, work in that world uh, was really exciting because I, I just felt there was a way to sort of, to do that and, and do it very subjectively and do it very, in an interesting way that might differentiate itself. Um, and so that's where it kind of started. And then, you know, when I kind of got feedback from my team about, oh, we love this idea, you start writing the script and you start mm -hmm. pursuing it. Yeah, fantastic. I, I mean, Jake, for you, I mean, uh, uh, as Dean as a character and the script itself, I mean, what was it that drew you in initially? Was it kind of the combination of, of Ariel and Dean's kind of journey and, and, and Josh's kind of take on Bonnie and Clyde in, in 2020? Yeah, I, th I thought the topic was so relevant to what was going on today and the way that Josh kind of added these other layers of the heist and, and the chemistry of this couple. Um, it just was something I wanted to explore. Like I, I felt that I related to Dean and in his kind of confusion of social media and its, its impact. And it's something that I've always tried to wrap my head around. And um, yeah, I met with Bella and, and talked to her about the script and her ideas with it. And um, it's just something that I really wanted to jump on and, and, and explore. Was it an easy, easy kind of chemistry thing for, or this is a question for you and for, for Joshua as well, about the chemistry between you and Bella in the, in the film is so kind of raw and there's a great kind of dynamic between the two of you. I mean, was that an easy thing to, to do given Josh's script, but also between the two of you? Was it an easy thing to, to kind of grasp? It was so easy. I mean, Bella and I hit it off like right away and we're great friends and um, great working partners as well. And, and Josh gave us a lot of freedom to, to interact with each other like outside of the script and dialogue as well. So I, I think that just like deepened our connection. And we were spending so much time together like in Oklahoma, like hanging out with the rest of the cast and crew. So it was just, it was like two friends having fun and, and working, working well together, yeah. Was that an easy decision to cast them, Josh? Was it easy to to find the people that you wanted, or was it quite a quite a long quite a long process? No, I mean it 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 took time to get to the place of casting. Um, but you know, Bella was somebody I sort of initially thought of when I was working on it, because I was writing such an unlikable, unsympathetic character, and there's a lot of people that won't play that, you know. And um, but her work sort of led me to think that she might, and I forgot about it because I didn't think we were going to get her. And then, uh, you know, she came on board through one of the producers who knew her manager and, and she was on there from the beginning. And, you know, Jake was somebody that we found who I thought had this really great sort of movie starish quality that could also play, you know, give the character some depth, you know, and, and still be all American. Um, and, uh, and so that, and then once we got them together, it just like, you know, it was easy. I mean, every day was like, you know, the worst is when you got to teach chemistry and it, <laughs> it doesn't work and it was really natural, but it was natural in a way that then allowed us to let them just go, you know, and, and then you get to take the parts that work and you get rid of the parts that don't, but it gives you an enormous amount of material to then play with in the edit. Absolutely. Uh, e, for you, um, I mean, when you got the script for the first time, what was kind of the, the, your, your brief, if you like, and how did you kind of go about bringing it to, to life? Because there's a real kind of, it has a, a, a very 21st century vibe to it, but also it, it kind of goes back to the themes of, you know, Bonnie and Clyde. Think. There's, a, there's a nice hint to, to, those, to those movies. I mean, was it kind of a, a, a combination of all those things that you wanted to, to bring to, to the film? Uh, yeah, I mean, I 
um, had read the, a few different versions of the script as Josh was writing it. And it's kind of was a long time, not a long time in the word, you know, world of scripts, but a while to get to the point of, okay, so now we're going to land in production. And once I know that we're really taking it, I'll start digging through everything and kind of pulling references from different places. And I knew that what, what we really wanted to create was something that felt modern and felt now without losing sight of some of these um, references to heist films or to kind of robberies or dynamics between certain characters. And one thing that I did in particular was go through the script and differentiate between what was really grounded in reality moments and what were moments that were a little bit more fantasy or a little bit more exciting or a little bit on the edge that we could then take those and push. And, you know, obviously you can see through the film that there's some scenes that are like really pushed and then some scenes that pull you back and really ground you in reality and kind of make you, re remind you that you're following these two people's stories and that you are with these characters and this is things happening to these people. And it was a, a flow figuring out how to blend those seamlessly through the film and how to kind of go from one heightened reality or sometimes what I think of as like a little bit of the fantasy version of what's happening. Um, very modern, very uh, colorful, but specific colors and specific kind of palette. And um, yeah, working with Josh and just kind of what that balance is, like what is too far, which is not usually anything for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> just go there. Um, and then when, when we have to kind of pull back to remind everyone that, you know, yeah, you're just, you're watching a movie where we are intentionally doing this and we're intentionally going here. When you, when you make a movie like this, has this changed, this is a question for all of you, I guess, uh, changed your perception of social media? I mean, it, it's such a great platform for people, but also such a dangerous platform for, and misused by, you know, different people to, to, to push forward an, an agenda. I mean, as, as making a movie like this, taught you any lessons about social media or changed your perception in some ways of, of social media and, and how it can be used for, for good and for bad? I mean, you know, I think that one of the things I've realized um, in thinking about this movie and writing about the movie was that, you know, it's, it's social, social media is a, a quantitative experience, you know, and so if you have somebody that's got 80 million followers, um, it doesn't matter the reason why anybody is following them. All that matters is that final number. And I think that's kind of scary because, um, you know, as much as you want to say, oh, I'm hate following this person, it doesn't matter. The act of following them has contributed to the value of that profile or the value of what they're saying. And you've amplified it and you've amplified it to people that might disagree with you and agree with what the original person was saying, you know. And so certainly this movie is satire. Right. But I also feel like now we're entering into this world with a lot of these social media companies where people are not you know, the social media companies say, well, you know, who, I can imagine not that far in the future where something gets posted on Facebook and Facebook goes, well, we're not law enforcement. Who are we to say what a crime is, right? They haven't been convicted. They haven't been put in front of a jury of their peers. Like they haven't been indicted. Like, so who are we to say that this is a crime? I don't know. I, we're, we just put it up. And, and so I don't think we're that far off it's a very slippery slope from saying we don't, well, who are we to say what a fact is <laughs> to who are we to say what a crime is? And so it's not that far fetched, but the movie is also intentionally a satire, you know, and it's intentionally ridiculous um, because that's what social media is. When you really look at it and you see the way, what people are putting up there, when you see the lengths people are willing to go for a like, um, you know, it's all, it's, it's all happening and maybe not in the same concentrated way but it is happening. And so I think that's in some way, you know, without me being too judgmental about it, it's sort of going, this is, this is just what it is. And that's really what the movie tried to be was a bit more of a mirror. Yeah, absolutely. What about for you, Jake? I mean, obviously working with Bella who, who has a substantial amount of, of followers on Instagram and is known for, you know, her social media and everything else. I mean, has this, has this changed your perception of it in some, some degrees, or do you think it's still a platform that can be used for, for the right reasons? Yeah, I mean, when I first read this script, I'm not gonna lie, a part of me was like, is this too crazy? Like, could this happen? And then I kind of sat with it over the day and I was like, no, this this very well could happen and, and, and probably is going to. So if I had read the script three, five years ago, would I have felt the same? No, but I think this the timing of this film is is very interesting because even when we were filming it, we were like, this could happen in real life before the movie came out, you know? 
And um, I think it's only a matter of time because everything's just escalating so much. I try to look at the positives that social media can have for like awareness or, you know, raising funds for causes. And I, I, I try and look at all the positives of it, but there are a lot of negatives. And so you hope that there's a shift. You hope through films like this, exposing the issue and critiquing what's going on that um, people will sit back and, and, and think twice about why they're using it and that we could just focus on the good side of it. The challenge is there's no gatekeepers with social, you know? And so as a result, there's nobody sort of curating what's being out there, you know, which can be both good and bad, but that's the main difference. Anybody with an iPhone can build an audience and in the tens of millions, you know, nowadays. And so that's, that's what makes it unique. Yeah, 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 yes, indeed. It's, I mean, obviously a strange time we're in now as well that the social media was being used to kind of give us the information and whether, whether you know, COVID information. I mean, it's the number correct. one source of news now. It's it like, is, yeah. you know, it's crazy. It is, it is crazy. Uh, e, for you, I mean, has this, has this changed your perception of, of social media? And do you, do you hope, like Jake said, that it kind of, it teaches us a few lessons that, that maybe, you know, for, for younger people who go onto social media and this, that becomes their life in, in some ways, that they kind of heed those, those warnings? Yeah, I, I hope that the takeaway from this film is that social media is a delicate place that you have to be very careful about what you put out there. I think one of the draws to these characters in a social media space is that not only are there no gatekeepers, as Josh said, saying into social media, there are, there's no one saying you're being a truthful version of yourself. And a lot of people who have social media accounts that they're running, it's not who they are. It's their version of themselves that they're putting out there. And these characters are being themselves. They are so honest and so out there with their social media that it's almost like, you know, I'm not sure if that's, this is the downside of the negative that you can do being completely honest with it is, is care is, you know, I don't want to sound like it's saying that you shouldn't be that way, but the good thing of this is to be that like, hopefully the, the version that you're seeing of someone on social media is the version that they want to share with you that is bringing good things into the world. And that is raising awareness for, um, how to mobilize and how to bring people together and, that can be for good and it can be for bad. And it's, it's, it's had a lot of power. And so you just, I think it's a, uh, it's just a warning of if you're not doing it with a, a good intention, which should not be self-serving, the good intention should be for something greater than just for yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And as much as there's good things happening on social media, right? Like clearly in this time, there's a lot of positive coming out of it. Um, I also think if this happened in real life, everybody would be following it, <laughs> you know, and, and that should tell you something, you know, because the act of following it, whether it's in fascination or repulsion, again, it's, it's quantitative. So it's still contributive to the bottom line of, of that number. And, um, you know, I think that that's what's scary. I mean, I think it's, this movie exists now in a world where the entire world watched until a woman's plane landed to see if she would be fired for a tweet that she sent off. That's the world we exist in. So as much as you want to think like, oh, it's all being used for good. It's like, it can still be used for not very good things at the same time. The same person following all the good stuff will also turn, tune in for the bad stuff because that's uniquely American. Crime sells, you know, every night it's on, it's online, you know, it's on TV. It's, it's what, it's a perverse fascination with crime that goes back to the beginnings of America. So, um, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, that's that's my time up, I think. So thank you absolutely so much for your for your time this evening. Uh, well, it's daytime for you. It's evening for me. Yeah. It's dinner time here. There you go. <laughs> um, I wish you all the best with the movie. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, stay stay safe in these in these crazy times. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. See you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!